Psalm 139. I must say, you know, we all have favorite scriptures and favorite books, uh, favorite passages, and I think if I had to name a favorite chapter, 139 of Psalm would be right up there. Hallelujah. Because, you know, there are different aspects of God that we all have as favorite favorite parts of who he is and I must say one of my favorite if not the favorite is the fact that he made me and he knows me God made me and he knows me and I just that always hit me very strongly from day one of my salvation you know God knows me and that it unsettled me slightly at first because I found strength in knowing that there's not anyone that knows everything about me I, 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 I like that when I was a sinner, but amen. Conversely, God used the fact that He knows me more than I know myself to really get deep down inside. Hallelujah. Psalm 139, 13 through 18. The Bible says this. Do you form my inward parts? You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed. And in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Let's pray. God, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you that we're here. We thank you, Father, that we have a place that you have blessed us with. Father, to come and praise and worship and serve you this morning. And Father, I pray that every heart, God, in here is focused, God, on your word. Lord, that we are able, Father, to keep the cares and concerns and the worries of the world outside this place, God, even now. Father, as we are preached to God, that you help us get deep in our hearts. Show us, Father, that which you would have us learn and have us know and write upon our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to <clears throat> preach from this portion of Scripture this morning a little different than usual. The name of this sermon is Clarity in Life. Clarity in Life. Clarity meaning being clear about something. Okay, when you're clear about something, you have a clarity about it. Now, human life is precious. Okay, I think that the, this portion of scripture I just read is, is uh, uh, very uh, demonstrative of that. <laughs> that human life to God and therefore should be to us very very precious Nelson says the sanctity of life created in his image God places special value on human life human life is sacred because the man and woman alone were created in the image of God and that life deserves protection God commands his people to protect and defend innocent human life Scripture extends this special status and protection to human life in every stage of development and need. The unborn child shares in God's image and is protected under Old Testament law. Believers are exhorted to defend and care for the sick, the elderly, and the poor. No one is excluded from protection and care. Throughout history, this biblical view of the sanctity of all human life has faced opposition most notably from those who advocate a quality of life viewpoint, suggesting that human life must possess certain qualities and abilities before it can be cons considered truly valuable and worthy of life sustenance. According to this distorted humanistic view, if the unborn child, the handicapped infant, or the elderly person does not possess these qualities, that individual is not entitled to protection which scripture or the law would give. There's even countries who uh, give more value to certain sexes than, than others. The Bible rejects or certain sexes than the other one. The Bible rejects this quality of life view. 
The value of human life does not depend upon the person's functional abilities or independent viability, but is assured because of the image of God which is found in every human life. God does not measure the quality of the human life of a human being before he bestows his image. God calls upon us to extend our care and compassion to every life he has created in every stage of development and in every need. Human life is precious. Hallelujah. Now, the human life needs clarity. Okay, we need clarity as human beings. Okay, the, the, the forever questions that we, we talk about once in a while is, where did I come from? Where will I go when I die? Why am I here? And, you know, what's my purpose in life? These are all questions that are, are innate in each and every one of us. Now, having said that, the fact that we need clarity, the world is becoming more and more confused. Okay, there are some of the issues of life that were clear, you know, back uh, even when I was a kid and before uh, aren't so clear these days. Okay, according to the Watchman World Report, in Massachusetts schools, they now allow students identifying themselves of the opposite sex as they are born to use whichever bathroom they choose. And so, you know, my wife and I and Ben were discussing this. It, it, in Massachusetts, if a guy wants to go into the ladies' room, all he has to do is say, oh, no, no, I'm a girl. And they, someone who identifies with that can use whichever bathroom they like. How <clears throat> I many know oh, that's not right? See, there are wrong beliefs that cause confusion, right? There are wrong beliefs that when you wrap your mind around certain beliefs that, you know, now have, have become popular, confusion results. There are wrong beliefs that cause confusion, and confusion in turn can cause wrong beliefs. You know, confusion and wrong beliefs, uh, especially spiritual, they go hand in hand. People who believe that they're supposed to be the opposite sex than what they were born as, those people are confused. They're confused. Okay, they, they, something is, you know, obviously it's a choice, okay? Uh, no, one's, no one's born like that. Whatever someone was born, uh, you know what? That's what God created them to be. You know, and I've heard all these scientific and medical things that happen. I, I don't know. I don't know. How's that for this? I don't know. All I know is if you were born a boy, that's what you're supposed to stay. And if you were born a girl, that's what you're supposed to stay. You know, you, you, you can't be walking around saying you're something else and, and, and have a clarity about life. Belief in evolution causes confusion. People walk around believing that, you know what, uh, because of some explosion uh, from nowhere, now we're here. All you have to do is, you know, read things about, I don't know, giraffes and, and woodpeckers and, and, you know, our own DNA and know that there's no way that that can come from a one-celled uh, being that came from, you know, primordial soup, that came from a rock, that came from nothing. It's, a, it's impossible to believe that and not be confused about life. Amen. It takes more faith to believe in that than it does a, a loving God. But this this confusion and, it, and it, you know they're teaching confusion in schools. A lot of these subjects they teach should be that. Okay, what are you taking this first semester? Confusion 101. Well, what are they? What are they teaching in that? They're teaching evolution and the fact that it's okay to have two moms. Confusion 101. You know, they could do that and they would be right in the title and, and the curriculum. But how many know uh, we can have clarity in life? We're meant to have clarity in life. We're meant to know uh, exactly what life's about. We're meant to, you know, and, and life's full of, and I know because I was part of it. Well, you know, what is your life mission? Well, my life mission is to find out why I'm here. You know, Tim masterfully brought it out last night. Uh, you know, his life was to find out why we, he was here. Now when he find out, okay, now what am I going to do? My, my whole life's mission has been accomplished. Hallelujah. But praise God, God showed him what to do, amen. He got a clarity, didn't he? 
Why? Because we're meant to have a clarity in life. We're not meant to walk around and wonder why we're here. Until, you know, before we find it, we're meant to wonder. Amen. But we're meant to go down the path that's going to lead to the answer. See, clarity doesn't come from knowing who we are. It comes from knowing whose we are. Clarity doesn't come from knowing who we are. It comes from knowing whose we are. When I said that to Ben, he goes, wow, that's great. Did you make that up? I told him, yes, don't tell him I didn't. Wish I did. Amen. Clarity in life is ours to possess. Now there are two thoughts, or two facts, if you will, that go together this morning that can't be separated. Basic facts that I talk about a lot. They are that God has a plan and God created us. Okay? Two very common, well-known facts. Amen. And I, I, I changed it to facts instead of beliefs. Because you know what? These are facts no matter what anyone believes. The reason I say that they can't be separated is because He made us uh, uh, to be part of His plan. Not, you know, God has a plan for me. Yeah, God's plan for you is to be part of His plan. Okay, God doesn't have a specific, okay, all, all other 7 billion people in the world, you know, this is what I want, but I want you to have to do something. No, no, no. God has a plan and He wants all 7 billion people to be part of His. That's our plan, to be part of God's. Hallelujah. Now we have a choice in this, and we know that. So I want you to consider with me this morning godly attributes in us. Godly attributes in us. Now God made each... I'm, I'm go, you know, I have a very specific point here uh, to, to get to. Hallelujah, th this morning. and Everything I say will lead to that. God made each one of us as individuals. Okay, He didn't just uh, mass produce human beings. Uh, and this fact is, is important to understand because sometimes, you know, even as uh, you, you, you step out of the, the pre-teen years into the teen years and you, you start going on that, sometimes it's easy to feel out of place. You know, I don't fit. I don't belong. You know, and, and that, that could be very common. Uh, and, and people that age, even in, in, you know, maybe even older. But the fact is, uh, you know, we're all different. And then we, we like being with like folks. That's why you have groups of, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different <laughs> groups, infinite number almost, uh, in the world of different groups, like people who share like experience, have like uh, uh, things about them, and, they, and they, they form a group and hang out. You know, whether it be, uh, you know, there's a group called Tin Can Sailors. Those are sailors that were part of, were on destroyers or cruisers in the Navy. And they all, you know, you'll see them, they hang out. Uh, guys that ride Harleys, right? You, you ride a Harley, you hang out with people that ride Harleys. And, you know, there's all kinds of different uh, groups. But the bottom line is, it, it, it's easy to, to not, to feel like you don't belong, because the bottom line is we're all different somehow. We're all the same somehow and we're all different because God made us as individuals. Now when He created us, He purposely put things in each of us to make us who we are. He gave us certain personality traits, talents, abilities, character traits in each one of us as He saw fit. You know, that's why we're fearfully and wonderfully made. But that means, you know, God doesn't make junk. And God created something that He wanted to create. The old potter and clay analogy. Things like common sense. Desire to help others. Curiosity. Sense of humor. Ability to communicate powerfully. Writing skills. Athletic ability. Compassion. Being good with working with your hands. Uh, uh, you know, musical ability, things like that. Ben found this uh, thing uh, online about this kid who had uh, autism. They brought him up, uh, flew him over New York City for 20 minutes, came down and sketched it. And 
that looked like New York City. This kid was out there. I mean, that's incredible. You should have seen the sketch of it. I mean, it was a big one. This kid was out there sketching what he just, you know, flew around, looked at the buildings, came back down, they gave him a pen and a big wall kind of thing, and boom, he, he, he sketched it. And I'm not talking, you know, like anyone can sketch, you know, 40 skyscrapers and no, no, it looked like New York City. Hallelujah. God gave us all abilities and, and uh, things about our personalities. Now we share some of these things, obviously, but each person has their own unique combination of these. We all have our own uh, unique combination of, of some of these things I read and, and, and many, many other things. You know, the old, uh, the famous scripture, Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. You can look in our, in our scripture, in, in Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. Hallelujah. And so God made each and every one of us, gave us each some similar things, but the combination that he put in each and every one of us is totally unique. Hallelujah. He put these things in us because he wants us to use them for his glory. That's why we were born, okay? God gave us godly attributes. He put things in us personality-wise, character-wise. Amen. So that we could we could uh, use them for His glory, and we're going to look at this. But how many know? You know, it, it, you can see godly traits in people who aren't even saved. Right? You don't have to be a Christian to have godly traits. I mean, you see people who you know uh, who give their lives to serving others, and they could care less about God. You know that it, it, it's quite a phenomenon. But the thing is, God put them there. Now He wants them to get saved and use them for Him. Not everyone who has godly traits uses them to glorify God. <laughs> but He gives them to us. I remember when I got saved, you know, I thought I had to get rid of everything. I, re I did. I mean, I thought I had to get rid of it. I couldn't think of anything I should keep, to be totally honest with you. I'm talking personality traits. You know, I... I'm going to start naming, I was going to start naming some, but some of you would say, well, be thinking, man, I wish you would have had that one. But, you know, and I wouldn't blame you. But, you know, it's something you just can't help being, right? I mean, I tried to be quiet and believe me, and I, and I say this with all seriousness. You know, uh, sometimes I have a tendency to try to make people laugh. And I actually tried to stop doing that when I got saved. Because when I got saved, the church was very, very somber and solemn and, and you know, uh, it was supposed to be Pentecostal, but it was, it was kind of quiet and religious. And so, you know, uh, then I come in there and, uh, you know, I barely saved if, amen. And so I figured I was supposed to, me you know, mellow out. You know, you're over 30 now. You know, when I was... I was listening to the hippies. Don't trust anyone over 30. I listened to that in the 60s. And so, you know, I'm 30 now. I'm going to, you know, whatever. I have my mindset. Until God brought me to Christian Fellowship Ministries and saw the nut preaching. Saw all the men in our fellowship, you know, who uh, went up there to preach, whether it be a conference or a revival or in church, that you know what? Uh, man, look, those guys, aren't, they don't seem a whole lot different. But they are, they're saved. But they had the revelation, and finally I got it, that, you know what, God can use the things that He, he gave you when you weren't saved, even when you're saved. He can, you can use those. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That's why it's better to have to reel someone in and try to have to kick them to get out there where God wants them. You know, let them go. Be who God wants you to be. Amen, you know, I, the disciple does something that, you know, maybe a little off color, it'll be taken care of. You know, uh, and, you know, we're human, bottom line. But you know what? God gave us godly attributes. 
attributes to use to glorify Him. And when we're saved, uh, there are some things He wants us to keep. I would say most. As long as you use them for Him. Hallelujah. God made us with a plan and a future in mind. We'll look at godly usage of His creation. Godly usage of His creation. Every talent, every ability, every character trait, every personality trait that God has given you, He gave you to use in a way that would bring about two things. Okay, there's two things in this life. There's two things in every one of our lives that God wants to use all these certain traits He, he gave us to accomplish. Okay, the first one is easy to glorify Him. God, whatever that trait might be, whether it be you're good with your hands, whether it be you have common sense, whether it be you have a sense of humor, whatever it might be that God gave you, He wants you, first and foremost, to use that trait that He gave you to glorify His name. That's why we're here, to glorify Him. The second thing that He wants those traits to do is to help other people. Okay, to help other people. God can use what He gave you somehow to help other people. Amen. And, you know, we could look at, well, you know, you know, you can name things and maybe not be able to figure out, well, how's that going to help someone? Well, I'm very shy and I don't even like to talk to someone. How can that help someone? I don't know. But God can find a way for that to help someone. Maybe help someone that's the same way. But whatever trait He gave you to glorify Him, amen, He will use it to help other people. See, no matter what attribute we're talking about, hallelujah, it's there. And He will find a way. And He wants it to glorify Him and to help others. Matthew 5.16 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. John 15 verses 7 and 8 The Bible says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Hallelujah. By this my Father is glorified. Talking about our very lives. Talking about when we're here to His disciples. Talking about when we abide in Him and His words abide in us, then His Father will be glorified. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16. 19, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Hallelujah. And so our bodies, which are God's, and our spirit, which is God's, are meant to glorify Him. We are not our own. Hallelujah. We were bought with a price, a heavy price. And so we're meant to glorify God. Our lives were created to glorify our Heavenly Father. And when that happens, okay, when our lives, well, how, how's that going to help people? Well, when, when our lives glorify God, amen, uh, it can change the lives of others that see it. First Kings 8, 10 and 11. It came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And so God's glory, amen, that filled that place, filled it with fog, filled it with His, with his glory, filled it with a cloud. You know, what? They, they couldn't even minister. Why? Because His glory was there. And when God's glorified, you know what? People will see that. And that is meant, and it will, accomplish the glorifying of God. Luke 2. I'm going to read 8 through 20. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. 
For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe, babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Suddenly there was uh, with the angel a great multitude of the heavenly host praising, and, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem. See, see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying, lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in their heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Hallelujah. His God being glorified. Hallelujah. And it changing people's lives. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Now the, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, uh, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our lives are meant to glorify God. And when it is, it changes people's lives. Amen. Now, showing them God working in the life of when God is glorified in our lives by using who we are, it can change the lives of others by showing them God. Okay, by showing them God work, and by showing God working in the life of another human being. Hallelujah. You know, you, you can talk about God, and you can preach about God, you can witness about God, you can draw the pictures you want about what Jesus looks like. Amen. You can, you know, dress like him, up like Him, and act like Him all you want. But you know what glorifies Him? And you know what uh, uh, shows people that He's real? Amen. Is when He changes and when He's working in the life of another human being. That's what gets people's attention. And that's what gets people uh, wanting to know this God that you know more. I mean, it's easy to have religious symbols. And it's easy to practice, go to church and practice a religion. But you know what? Uh, when, when there's a real life change because of Jesus Christ... That's when people see a real God. Now this next statement is where the sermon is going this morning. When your life is being used by God to glorify God, with that comes clarity. Okay, with that comes clarity. When, you're, when your life uh, is being used for what it was proposed for, for what God created it for, when, you're, when your uh, life is glorifying God to other people, that's when clarity happens. That's when your life is clear. Okay, that's when confusion leaves if you had any. Amen. When someone is, a, is born a boy, but grows up like a, and tries to act like a girl, amen, a homosexual, when that person gets saved, that person finally sees that, oh, I was wrong. Now it's clear. Okay, now they know. That you know what? I was born a male, and I'm supposed to stay a male. Why? Because now they, they, uh, they got saved and had a real experience with a real Savior. And what that does is it brings a clarity to the mind. Someone who believes in, in, in evolution, grows up believing in evolution. All of a sudden, they know better. They, you know, I can't come from a rock. Because God made me. And that brings a clarity uh, about who someone is. Amen. About, you know, uh, uh, where we came from, where we're going, what we're here for, and where we're going when we die. See, that's how we get clarity, folks. I mean, people go, go to school and get all kinds of letters after their name. Amen. To be intellect on an intellectual level that no one can touch, except, the, you know, a few. But you know what? And, and they claim to have what life's all about. But unless they know Jesus Christ, they don't have a clarity. Hallelujah. Clarity comes when, 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 when someone speaks something to someone else, and that next night, that someone who speaks it comes to a church and hears the very same thing uh, that they spoke to someone else the night before. 
Hallelujah. That woman here last night, some of you met her. Whether it be in the two testimonies, whether it be in the songs, I mean the song lyrics, whether it be in, in the preaching last night, Mike preached last night. He, he, he quoted the exact scripture that uh, she wanted us to read to her last night. Exact. Ex the very exact scripture. You know, Mark and I were smiling at each other because we, we, God brought, we didn't know she was coming last night. She didn't tell us she was coming last night. She showed up. And God spoke to her exactly what was spoken to her and answered the, some of the questions. She, he, God answered word for word the very question that she asked us the night before. Last night. More than once. Not just once. You know, that, that brings a clarity. That brings a clarity. And Ains Patricia, pray for her. I believe she'll be back. Because there's other forces trying to work their way in. Amen. Into her life. But you know what? That, she liked it. She, she thanked Mark and I, again, for coming to her door last night. Mark said, no, we should be taking you. Because God brought us. We didn't come there. God brought us there. Hallelujah. And so that brings a clarity. You know, uh, it brought a clarity to me. I had one. But you know what? It's more now. Hallelujah. You want clarity in your life? Give it up. You know, when you have clarity in your life, you'll come to church with a purpose. Not just because you have to or you think you need to. You know, you stand here, just whatever, and then you leave. No. You know, when, when you have a clarity about Christ, which is the only place you get it, you'll come to church with a purpose. You'll come to church because you know this is where it's at. There's all kinds of churches out there. And I don't know the percentage, but the vast majority of them are confused. It's like, oh, uh, you know, you, you like to invite you out to church, you know, and Jesus Christ loves you. Oh, I go to church. Oh, yeah, what church is that? Mm -hmm. Well, why do you go there? That, that church is going to hurt you more than help you. Oh, you shouldn't be criticizing churches. I'll criticize all the churches I want that teach stuff from hell. They need to be criticized. Now, obviously, you know, you don't do that, you know, use the balance. God will give you the balance. I'm not going to preach such, you know, basic stuff that we all ought to know. But you know what? I can say that amongst you. And there are religions out there that are bringing people to hell. And that they give their lives to and give their kids lives to all the way down the line. You know? Well, why, why do you go to that church? Well, because my great-great-grandmother did. Give me a break. Your great-great-grandmother might be rotting in hell. Is that where you want to go? I mean, you know, let's be real here. Just because uh, traditions aren't always good. I have this little humorous story I, I, I tell sometimes too. When, when someone tells me they go to the Catholic Church because their grandmother and their mother their father whatever did. I say, you know, th there was this guy who noticed that his wife, before she cooked the Easter ham, she cuts the ends off it. You know? And he always wondered about that. Why? So he asked her one time, why do you always cut the ham, the ends of the ham, off when, when, before you cook it? She said, well, my mother always did that. Oh. And so he went to his mother-in-law. And he said, why do you, do you cut the ends off your ham? Oh, yeah, I, I do. He said, well, well, why do you do that? Well, my mother always did. Oh. Well, his, his, mother's, his wife's grandmother was still alive, and so he went to her. Do you cut the, the ends off your ham? Yes, I do. Well, why do you do that? Because my pants too small, it won't fit. And so you know, here's a slightly humorous story about someone doing something for absolutely no reason, thinking there's a reason to it. You know, when his wife's pan was big enough to probably fit two hands. And so you know, people can get caught up uh, in, in 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 confusing religion, thinking that it's not confusing at all. But that's what's confusing. And I think I brought that point out very well just then. <laughs> Amen. But see, when we give ourselves to the one who created us uh, to be given to, you know what? Uh, there's a clarity that comes in life. 
and the clearer uh, and more focused someone in these, <laughs> is these days about life and spiritual matters, the more that stands out. The more it stands out. Hallelujah. Godly uses it, usage of His creation is to glorify Him and help people. And what that does is creates clarity in our lives. I want to look lastly at the blessing of clarity. When you know that you know why you're here. You know, God, God speaks to you that your life is to be used by Him. And life comes into focus no matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. You know, when you have that clarity, when you have that clearness of mind, you know, and, 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 you know, again, let's be real, sometimes in a Christian's life, we don't like what's going on around us. We don't like it. And sometimes there are even attempts by the devil through life, through, uh, you know, powerful influences to make us start to think, try to make us start to think a little foggy about, you know, our Christianity. I mean, that happens. But you know what? When you know that you know, you can have a clarity through whatever happens in your life. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can make that stand no matter what people are saying to you. No matter what they're doing. No matter what the whole world's doing. Hebrews 1. I think it's Hebrews 11. It is. I forgot to write one of the ones in the 11. But Hebrews 11, starting in verse 24. By faith, Mo by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Hallelujah. And so his Moses, you know, a powerful man. Look, look what he had to look forward to. But when he realized who he was, I mean, who knows how he felt sometimes uh, before he knew who he really was as he was growing up. Amen. But it brought a clarity to his life in such a way where he was willing to turn his back on all that and be persecuted. Amen. Now, you know, difficult times, 40 years in the desert. Hallelujah. And went through some things. But I tell you what, uh, when, 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 when they left Egypt, hallelujah, he was glad he had that clarity. And when he saw that Red Sea part, uh, you know what? There was a clarity. Amen. There was a clarity in Abraham. Hallelujah. We're going where, you know, and I use him a lot. But you know what? He, he did not back down uh, from what other, what looked like craziness and chaos by everyone else. Hallelujah. Creates a clarity. That's where we find clarity in life. We've got to have clarity in life. We can't wonder. Amen. We can't back down. Can't do it. You formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed. And in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the same. When I awake, I am still with you. Hallelujah. You know, if you're confused about some things, some spiritual matters, uh, that there's something going on there. Hallelujah. There's something going on there. Amen. Because God is not the author of confusion. He's the author of clarity. Amen. And clear thinking and clear calling. Hallelujah. And so, you know, uh, uh, well, I'm confused about this. I've been asking God. I'm confused about this. Well, you know what? Uh, just be still and wait on God. Amen. 
Be still and wait on God, and He will clear up any confusion, hallelujah, that you may have in your life. He will. Why? Because He's a God of clarity. And if you have to start from the day you got saved, and thank God for that, amen, and, and allow Him to bring into your remembrance all the wonderful things He's done, amen, that it won't take long for that clarity, amen, to overtake any fog that the enemy or, or life is bringing into your brain. Hallelujah. We are to have a clarity in our lives. Amen. And that comes from knowing whose we are. Let's bow our hands.